Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, I'm having troubles with my internet, but I I hope that can we can end the session <clears throat> well. Uh, I don't know; it's kind of um, it's a low. So if you have troubles uh, listening to the audio or something like that, you can tell me because I having some kind of troubles with the connection. So we are going to start. Um, Freeze, sometimes. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know. I'm working with the internet on my cell phone because um, the other internet is not working at all. So I think it's kind of heavy. Because it's generating the other, the other, um, the video for the previous class, so it okay. will be kind of hard. So we are going to start because we need to learn a lot of things. So let's begin. So now we are going to talk about the. Uh, I mean, this is not the one. No, of course, it is not. I am at the end of the document. Why? I don't know. So we are going to talk uh, about. So, uh, I, I think that. I think it's not very well. Oh my God. So we are going to try to uh, complete the session because I'm having so much trouble, but we are going to start. So uh, for this uh, topic that we are going to see today, we have the demonstrative pronouns. Uh, yesterday we were listening at a conversation, but First, let me stop this one. And then we are going to go to the document. First, we are going to talk about the things that we were um, listening yesterday. Then I'm going to show you the examples and all of the information that you need to know about this uh, topic. So yesterday, we were um, listening a conversation in which we have the demonstrative and it says that we have words like this, that, this, and those. So in the conversation, we have two people that are uh, buying some earrings and they are using these words to talk about that uh, things they are going to buy. So in this case, we are going to talk about the demonstrative pronouns. And also we are going to write some examples to understand what are the uses for these um, words, these specific words. And also we are going to have a lot of information about them because we have more words and we have a specific uses for them. Then we are going to talk about the second topic that is uh, something that has to be with the pronunciation of the words or the pronunciation in the sentence. And we are going to see some information about that. So now I will try to uh, share the screen again, trying to have a look with this one. So let's see. We have here the objective for this topic and it says, by the end of this lesson, participants will be able to use demonstrative pronouns, these, this, that, and those to express possible choices. 
because we are going to uh, choose between two or more things. And we have an example. We have the image in which we have singular, plural, and we have near and far. What uh, or why are we talking about uh, positions? Vamos a hablar de posiciones porque estos um, pronombres demostrativos también se utilizan con las cosas que tenemos cerca y lejos, no simplemente con los singulares y los plurales. So in the image, you can see that we have for singular words, we have these and it's kind of close to us. And then we have that also for singular, but are far from us. Then we have these that are plural, two or more things and are near to us. And then we have those that are also plural, but far from us. So let's see what is the information that we have for these uh, words that we are going to use. And it says that a uh, demonstrative pronoun is a pronoun that represents a noun and expresses its position as near or far, including in time, not just something physical. It's talking about uh, also the time. The demonstrative pronouns are this, that, uh, this, and those. So we are going to write some information about this pronoun. So it says, It's a pronoun that represents a noun and express its position as near or far. And we include time. The demonstrative pronouns are those. Those. So we have four words that we are going to use to um, talk about things that are near or far and also that are singular or plural. And we have two examples. And we have the first one. Is that yours? yours and then we have eat this tonight so like all pronouns demonstrative pronouns replace nouns or noun phrase more specifically, a, a demonstrative pronoun stands in for something that has been previously mentioned or understood from context. So in this case, when we are talking with someone and we talk about a specific, um, in this case, a specific thing, we can change something about the information that we are giving and we can add this kind of Oh my God, what is happening here? So we can add this uh, demonstrative pronouns to change that uh, and to make kind of, um, how can we say it? Mm, a dynamic information because we are talking about a specific thing and we know that we are talking about that. So in that case, 
I need to change that information because I don't need to uh, say the same team twice or three times or other in all of the conversation. For example, I'm talking about, um, let me see, a class, an important class. And we are talking about uh, that I have learned a lot of things in grammar class, for example. And I'm talking about grammar class and grammar class, but in that case that I'm telling you that I have that class, I don't need to say, ah, in the grammar class. I can say in that class. And you know that I am giving information about a specific class. But in that case, I'm talking about that specific information. Eh, un uso bastante eh, simple de este tipo de pronombres es cuando nosotros hablamos y no necesito darles eh, todo el tiempo la, la misma información, sino que yo puedo cambiar y decirles. En el, en el ejemplo del, de la clase de gramática, yo ya les hablé que estuve en una clase de gramática y no necesito decirles todo el tiempo, ah, la clase de gramática, la clase de gramática. Yo cambio y le digo, ah, en aquella clase, in that class. Y podemos ir cambiando y mejorando, ¿verdad? Lo que es la conversación sin necesidad de eh, utilizar la misma palabra todo el tiempo. So, we have an example. Do you remember the lobster eh, with the blue claw? Can I have that, please? And I, I'm going to write the example. Because it, it's easier to understand. We have, do you remember the lobster with the blue claw? With the blue. So we are talking about a lobster. That in Spanish is, what is a lobster? This one, lobster. Langosta. Yes, langosta. So we are talking about a lobster. Estamos hablando de una langosta en este ejemplo. So, do you remember the lobster with the blue claw? I, can I have that please? Can I have that please? So in this case, this one, this word is for the name lobster. I'm changing the lobster for that. So I don't uh, have to tell the person, do you remember the lobster? Can I have the lobster, please? Because it's kind of weird if we can use the name of the same thing twice or three times. So in this case, I'm telling first the, uh, the name, the noun. So in that case, do you remember the lobster? Can I have that? Who, what? The lobster. So then we have another one. This is delicious. So if we are talking about lobsters and I'm saying this is delicious, it's obvious that I am talking about the lobster. So I don't need to, to complete the sentence telling the name of the things that are, um, in this case, eating. So we have another one talking about lobsters. Uh, do you remember the two lobsters holding clouds? Do you remember the two <clears throat> lobsters holding clothes? Can I have those? Because we have two. Can I have those, please? 
So in this case, we are using plural. And we have these are delicious. So remember that with a demonstrative pronouns, the antecedent, we have that word antecedent does not always appear in nearby text. The antecedent is often understood from the context of the speaker's surrounding. So in that case, we have that things that we know as an antecedent because we were talking about some specific topic and we have that information, that previous information. And then we are just going to create another sentence but we have the information. And when we were talking about whatever topic that we want to tell, uh, when we are talking with friends, for example, we are talking about something that happened um, days before or that uh, something that happened uh, last year, for example. And I'm talking, I'm saying all the things that I want to say. And I'm changing some nouns for this kind of uh, pronouns. But my friends has the, um, the context because they have the antecedent for the things that I am saying. The singular demonstrative pronoun, this and that, stand in for singular things. The luster with the blue cloth. The plural demonstrative pronouns, these and those, stand in for plural things. The two lobster holding gloves. As well as telling us whether its antecedent is singular or plural, a demonstrative pronoun also tells us whether its antecedent is near or distant. That and those stand in for distant things. The luster in the tank. This and this stand in for near things. The lobsters on the plate. So let's see. It says that um, a demonstrative pronoun. Also, tell me, Denise. Tiene encendido el micrófono, Matías. Oh, Matías. Hola, hola. Uh, that Dennis is saying that your microphone is on. Near or distant. And we have that. And those. Stand and we have the example here lobster in the thing.
So, uh, we have that the demonstrative pronoun that and those is for distant things. Things that we have a, in a kind of long distance from us. And in the example, it says the lobster in the tank because we are sitting in some specific place and the tank is mm, mm, kind of a uh, long from us. And then we have this and this that is done for uh, near things. Things that I have uh, like very, very near from me. The luster on the plate that is on the table. So when we are talking about things that we have in, in our space, for example, I have done, um, I have a mirror. I have a mirror in my room, but it's far. So I have to say um, that is on the table. What the mirror? The mirror is on the table. That is on the table. Then I have like, let me see. Mm, I have a, a mm, I don't know. I have some, some book. I have some books because I like to read and I have all of that books in one specific space. But in this moment, those are far from me because uh, those, we can say books, are in the next space or in the next room. But I have my cell phone on the table near to me. So I have it. I have that, or I have these here right now. What my cell phone? I have this here. So in that case, it's for the space, the things that we have in the same space that we are in that moment. So remember that demonstrative pronouns is standing for things. Typically, they stand it for a noun phrase or a previous express idea. Demonstrative pronouns do not modify nouns. In this case, they are not modifying anything. Like, for example, uh, the adverbs or the preposition and all of the things. The uh, demonstrative pronouns are not changing anything. They are not modifying the nouns. The nouns are like the same. When these, that, these, and those modify a noun, they are demonstrative determiners. But in this case, we are not talking about that topic. We are talking about demonstrative pronouns. So in that case, if the uh, demonstrative change something in the noun, it is not a pronoun. It is a determiner. That is called demonstrative adjectives in traditional grammar. So if you have demonstrative adjectives are another topic and it is not this one because these are a pronouns. So, um, we have the pronouns in the following examples. This idea, we are going to see that we are not going to change anything in the noun. This idea. So in this case, I have this word. And it is the same. It is not changing. This idea. Then we have, is that bike yours? Is that bike yours? Bike is the noun. I'm not changing anything in the noun. Then we have,
eat these tacos tonight. In this case, I am using plural, but that's it. I'm not changing anything in the noun. Then we have throw those rolls away. So, if you can see in these uh, pronouns, we are not going to change anything in the form of the noun because they are just to tell us the, uh, if the things that we are talking about are singular, plural, near or far. So we have some things that we need to know about this one that uh, is very important for the first one. Um, a demonstrative pronoun doesn't always stand in for something known to the audience because in some cases, um, people doesn't know anything about the context of the things that we are saying. So um, in that case, we need to say all the uh, sentence for people understand the context of the things that we are saying. And we can also use those uh, demonstrative um, pronouns to tell about the context of the sentences. Then the antecedent of demonstrative pronouns can come after it. Occasionally, the thing the demonstrative pronoun represents comes after the demonstrative pronoun. When this happens, it's called a post Potsedon. It is not an antecedent, it is a potsedon that is not the antecedent of the things. So it is at the beginning. Why demonstrative pronouns are important? Why we need to, to learn about demonstrative pronouns? The most common writing issue involving a demonstrative pronoun is a weak uh, ambiguous or non-existent link to its antecedent, sometimes called a faulty pronoun of reference. In this case, it's talking about grammar and all of the things uh, because we can tend to make mistake because of the things that we were writing. Um, so in that case, it's because we don't have the link for the antecedent to the context of the of the things that we are saying. So for that reason, we make mistakes and it, that's why we need to understand what are the antecedents of the things that we are saying. Because we can not understand this or don't, don't have the uh, a specific meaning for the words that we are using. So, this topic of the um, demonstrative pronouns, it's not kind of a long because uh, we just have this kind of exercises or examples in which we can use in daily conversation, but it's not like very complicated. So now we are going to leave this topic in that examples. And we are going to see this one because this is for us kind of important because we need to, to improve our pronunciation. So we have sentence stress. It is not like talking about the activities and I feel like I am very stressed. No, it is talking about the pronunciation. And in this case, we have the objective and it says, in this lesson, participants will listen to sentences uh, stressed in order to improve pronunciation. So in that case, uh, how can we uh, pronounce some words in the sentences to give or to have like, um, understand the uh, complete idea of the sentences? So now we are going to talk about pronunciation. You know that we are learning English and we need to make people understand the things that we are saying. So in this case, we need to focus on some words that we have 
and that make this kind of easy thing to understand the things that we are saying. So it says, if you can read something about the stress of the sentence, it said the sentence stress is the music, is the music of a spoken English. And it is not saying that we need to sing. It is saying that we need to make this, um, make the words like very uh, interesting for the people that is hearing or listening our words. So, like word stress, sentence stress can help you to understand spoken English, even rapid spoken English. One of the things that we, um, that make this process kind of hard is the way in which people talk. Uh, if you can hear different people talking in English, you can find that there are some people that talk very, very fast. And it's kind of complicated to understand what these people is saying. But um, there are other people that talk like very slow and we understand mm, almost everything. So in this case, sentence stress is very important for that thing because we need to know how to understand the things that people is saying. So sentence stress is what gives English its rhythm or beat. Um, it says that word stress is absent on one syllable within a word. Sentence stress is absent on certain words within a sentence. Most sentences have two basic type of words. And here we are going to write something about the sentence stress. So it says, dice que muchas de las oraciones tienen dos tipos básicos de palabras. Así que vamos a ver cuáles son esas eh, palabras o esas, eh, esos componentes que tienen las oraciones. Cuando hablamos de este, eh, este estrés o esta, um, este cambio de pronunciación, ¿verdad? So, most sentences have two basic type of words. And we have number one. It says content words. That is the first one. Content words. And it says that content words are the key words of a sentence. Key words of a sentence. So, in the uh, sentences, we have the first kind of words that are the content words, that they are the keywords. Uh, they are the important words that carry the meaning or sense or the real content. So, in ese caso, verdad, este tipo de palabras eh, son como las palabras claves, las que nos dan la idea principal de la oración o el sentido, ¿verdad? De lo que estamos tratando de decir en esa oración. En number two, we have the structured words. And it says that are not very important words.
they are a small, simple words that make the sentence correct grammatical. They give the sentence its correct form or its structure. If you can see in this case, it says that they are not very important, but I think they are very important words because in that case, if we don't have that kind of simple words, our sentence will be not uh, correct. Talking about grammar. So in that case are very important, but they are like not the most important words in the sentence, but they are kind of important. It says, if you remove the structure words from a sentence, you will probably still understand the sentence. If you remove the content words from a sentence, you will not understand the sentence or the sentence has no sense or meaning. Si retiramos las palabras de estructura, que son las no tan importantes, podemos llegar a entender una oración. Pero si quitamos las content words, Lo más seguro es que no vayamos a entender de qué trata la oración. So, imagine do, that you are receiving this message. Vamos a tener un ejemplo. And we are going to create some things with this example. Um, let's see. Imagine that you receive This Telegram message. And we have four words. We have sale, car, gone, friends. Maybe you have an idea of the content of the message. Imagínese que reciben este tipo de mensaje. Sale, car, gone, friends. Maybe you can have an idea, I think. Because I have an idea of the message that that person is going to say. So this sentence is not complete. Obviously, it's not complete. It is not a grammatical correct sentence, but you probably understand it. These four words communicate very well. Somebody wants to sell their car, sell car from them because they have gone to France. We can add a few words. Tenemos el ejemplo y vamos a agregar algunas cuantas palabras para entender mejor la oración. So, for example, sell, and we can add my car. And then we have the other one, I'm gone to friends. So it's kind of complete. The new words do not really add any more information, but they make the message more correct grammatically. We can add even more words to make one complete grammatical correct sentence, but the information is the same. So in that case, we are just adding some words but we are not adding information to the sentence, just adding words. And we have, will you sell, you sell my car because I've 
gone to France. So in our sentence, the four keywords, sail, car, gone in France, are accentuated or is stressed. So in that case, in the sentence, in the words that you are going to put, the emphasis is in sale, car, gone in friends. En esa oración, ¿dónde vamos a poner el énfasis? O nuestra fuerza de voz. En esas cuatro palabras que ya teníamos, que son el content words. Son las palabras de contenido, no de structure words. And las keywords is in which we are going to use the stress. So that's the important point. In the uh, content words, we need to put the stress, not in the structure. Tenemos las palabras de estructura, pero en esas no le vamos a poner el, la fuerza de voz, el estrés, el énfasis, sino que lo vamos a poner en el content words. So, will you sell my car? Because I've gone to France. So, in that, we are going to move or elevate the tone of the voice. Will you sell my car? Because I've gone to France. Why it is important for pronunciation? It is important because it adds music. Maybe my music is not, not kind of right, but it adds music to the language. It is the rhythm of the English language. It changes the speed at which we speak and listen to the language. The time between each expressed word is the same. In our sentence, there is one syllable between cell and car, and three syllables between car and gone. But the time, the, the sound between cell and car and between car and gone is the same. We maintain a constant beat on the stress words to, the, to do this. Um, we say my more slowly, my car, my car. And because I more quickly, because I, because I, we don't have this space, we pronounce. We change the speed of the small structure words so that the rhythm of the key content words stays the same. So we have the beat on the four words. Would you sell my car because I have gone to France? We change the tone of voice and uh, the way in which we speak. Would you sell my car because I've gone to friends. We are playing with the stress. So, let's see. I have an, an exercise, but first we need to see something else. We have the rules. Obviously, we have some rules for this kind of topics. So, basic rules of a stress sentence are, and we need to pay attention to this because the exercise has to be with the information, not with the phrases, just the information. So, we have the basic rules of sentence stress. are, and we have some rules. We have number one, content words are stress. Content words are stress. Number two, structure words are on stress.
Number three, the time between stress words is always the same. So we have a table in which we can see, um, in this case, the tables can help us to understand. Uh, tell me, Rigoberto. Uh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't uh, hear what is stress. Okay. Uh, the uh, what is it? What means? Okay. It's the uh, meaning of a sentence, right? Stress. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um. I don't know if I clear, but I think it's the meaning of a sentence. Okay. I, I'm I'm having troubles with the connection, so I can hear clear, but the stress is like. Uh, in this case, when you um, eh, put emphasis, cuando ponemos emphasis en la palabra, eso es el estrés. Cuando eh, nosotros le ponemos como el beat a la oración. But I will, I think I will send to you the information, the, the explanation of this topic because I'm having troubles and I don't know if you are uh, listening or you are understanding the things that I am saying because of the internet. So I will send the explanation to you because um, it's kind of hard to understand anything with this kind of uh, troubles that I am having. So I don't know if you are understanding uh, this topic very well. Okay, thanks. Okay, so we're going to, I mean, I will send to you the links that I have for you because I have uh, more information for this topic. Uh, so it will be easy to understand if you read the information that I have uh, because it's kind of, of, of heavy right now so in the information that i have um, you can find some uh, tables in which you are going to see the content words and the structure words uh, because we say that we have this kind of words in the sentence the content words are the most important words in the sentence and the structure words are the um like, how can we say it? Um, they help to understand better the information. But give me a second, just give me a second. internet connection um but i don't know can you hear me yep yeah okay i would um i will have the camera off 
because I think it's kind of stressful for the, the connection, but I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know. So I was saying that we have these uh, two parts that are the, um, the content words. So remember, the content words are, uh, tell me, Henry. Hello. Hello. And the in sentence three is ensure it is the central part of the sentence. The central part of the sentence. Yes. Yes, they are. The content words are the main idea. For example, the main idea of the sentence. Or the uh, most important part of the sentence. Yes, they are the most important part of the sentence. Okay, thank you. So, you're welcome. Así como decía Henry, es la parte más importante de la oración. The content words son aquellas palabras que si nosotros las tenemos, digamos en este caso como estas cuatro que tenemos aquí, estas podemos nosotros eh, adivinar cuál es el contenido de nuestra oración. It is not necessary to have other words because we have an idea. They help us to create an idea about the topic that we are going to know. The structure words, las palabras de estructura, son eh, aquellos detalles que le agregamos a la oración, que van a ayudarnos a que sean gramáticamente correctas. But they don't have any information or extra information for the topic that we are uh, developing. So in the, um, in the link that I will send to you, let me see if I can put this. Okay. In the uh, link that I will send to you, uh, you can have some example of these content words and structure words so you can, um, understand what are the most important words that we can use in a sentence. We have a, one table for content words. We have one table for a structure words. And we have the exceptions because we know that for all the rules that we have, we have an exception. So I will send uh, the uh, links right now because I don't know if I, I can do it later, but I will send to you these links right now. Let me see where are the group. Let me look here. We have link number one. And then we have link number two. So there you have two links in which you can find all the information about the uh, sentence stress. And also, um, I think you will find uh, some audios in which you can hear the pronunciation of the words because it says that in the content words, we need to make the emphasis of the words and also we are going to change the tone of the voice or the rhythm. Para la parte donde tenemos las eh, content words, vamos a cambiar incluso la forma en la que pronunciamos las palabras. Eh, podemos hacer pausas o incluso cuando tenemos más de una palabra vamos a eh, cambiar el ritmo y vamos a hablar un poco más rápido. Eh, Como decía el ejemplo, es música, ¿verdad? Es la musicalidad de la oración. It is not la, like we are going to talk like we are robots. No, in that case, we are going to change or make some changes in the way we are talking. Uh, for example, um, I think we were talking about that uh, feelings uh, before, but in some cases, um, 
we change the tone of the voice when we are exciting, when we are sad, when we are angry. And in this case, it is not the exception because we need to emphasize the ideas, the main ideas of the sentence. So that is the main thing of the, uh, the stress of the sentences. It's to emphasize or uh, tell people what are the main ideas of my information. Because you know that, uh, like we were doing yesterday, we listen for a specific information. So in that case, we can hear all the words that a, a, a person is spelling, but we just uh, need to understand the main idea for the um, for the things that we are saying. It kind it's kind of hard today to understand what I am saying, and I know that is kind of a uh, hard because. I don't know. It's something is is going really bad here. Um, but I I hope that the information that I sent to you help you to understand uh, this topic because it is not kind of complicated. Um, but you need to um, understand that uh, in some cases the words. Um, some words are more important than the others, but you need to have all the words in the sentence because it is a complete structure. And uh, it's better for us to have the complete sentence. So <clears throat> read the information that you have in the links that I sent to you because I will ask some things tomorrow to uh, no, if you understand the topic that we were developing uh, today. So in the links, you have all the information, all the important parts. And tomorrow I will ask some specific question about that information that you have in the links. So um, yeah, I think that is... <clears throat> the best solution for this big problem that we have today. So you have the information there and you need to read the information because this is not working. So I think I have this one wrong. This is for tomorrow, so don't worry. So it's time to end this chaotic uh, session. Um, I will try to have a good day tomorrow with the internet or I don't know. I will ask the heaven to help me to give the session uh, better for you, but some things happen and it's not working. So. It's time to say goodbye. We are going to see each other tomorrow in the last day of this week. So have a really a good night. And I'm so sorry for this session. So we are going to see each other tomorrow and read the information. Okay. We'll be about them. these, those, and the uh, stress question, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Well, you. see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night.